The best way to predict the future is to have an understanding of your past. Imagine a lush green landscape as far as the eye can see. Rolling hills, mango trees, banana trees, and fields of melon. And in the backdrop, the sun sets over a mountain range. This is one of the most beautiful places on the planet Earth. As you're walking through this oasis, a hundred yards away, you see a bird like you have never seen before. Its head is turned back while it holds an egg in its mouth and its feet are firmly planting forward as it moves toward the mountain range. This bird represents a powerful truth to many around the world. This is the Sankofa bird. Sankofa is a term that comes out of the Akan language in West Africa that translates to go back and get it. Or another understanding of this word can be the best way to predict the future is to have an understanding of your past. And as we move forward today, we're gonna learn a little about our past. In 1619, the first enslaved Africans were brought to North America. This event was a, a small component of a larger event called the transatlantic slave trade. This is an event that displaced millions of Africans in the Western Hemisphere. And when this event concluded, and when slavery was abolished in the United States, there were still numerous barriers placed in my people's way. But still, their spirits were never broken. W.E.B. Du Bois calculated in 1900 that African Americans had amassed nearly 18 million acres of land. Now the question becomes, how can the people who are just in bondage literally step into a position of ownership? Maybe that answer lies within the meaning of Sankofa. There was something else very special about this time. There was also a heavy push for industrial education within the African American community. Now industrial education is when you take the theory and you apply tangible knowledge to create a model with that information. An example of this can be found with the boarding town school in New Jersey, where African American men and women were taught the importance of carpentry, brick masonry, how to grow their own food, and also chemistry. This school gained recognition from many elites. One of their famed speakers was Albert Einstein. Another was Paul Robeson. Another, Booker T. Washington. And another, W.E.B. Du Bois. And if you like playing golf, the inventor of the golf tee came from this school. There was also another group, the New Farmers of America. This organization sought to teach African-American boys leadership through the exposure to agriculture. At its peak, their membership boasted over 55,000 African-American boys. And this was the largest organization in the world that focused on teaching this demographic agriculture. Now we have to take a step back and think about, okay, if these places once existed, where are they now? The Bordentown School was closed down due to a push to integrate the New Jersey public school system. And as of the early 2000s, this campus is being used by the New Jersey Department of Corrections. New Farmers of America, in 1965, due to desegregation, they were, they were taken over by the future Farmers of America and their leadership dwindled. Now, I don't want us to only focus on racism on the macro, from a macro perspective. It also happens locally on the micro perspective, from the micro perspective as well. When learning all this information, I wanted to be an agent of change. So what did I do? I became a school teacher. In the school district, 50 minutes 
from this theater. And in that, I saw that these young men who the school identified and whose society looks at as being a problem weren't the problem after all. These young men will often do better in their core classes. They will improve their behavior inside and outside of school. And they would start to change their perspective on life just from coming to work in the garden and to work with the chickens in Mr. Bell's class. But I also think it helped that I was, I was a pretty cool teacher as well. I think the <laughs> students like that as well. So I crafted up an idea. I said, you know what, we should start a summer agricultural academy with these young men. That way it would give them a push heading into the next school year. So I drafted up this proposal and I took it to the principal at the time. And she looked at it, then looked at me and said no. So I said, all right, I'm not gonna argue with you. We're gonna take this somewhere else. So now imagine a lush green landscape. This time, there are no fruit trees, but there are pine trees and there are cedar trees. There are smaller rolling hills, and instead of mountains, the sun sets over two large greenhouses. And to the right of those greenhouses, there are 15 beehives. And 50 yards away, as you approach this property, you see five young men. And when you look into their eyes, the only thing that you see is hope. This is our Sankofa. When it was time to name the farm, there was only one name that could do it justice. Sankofa. Sankofa, that's, that's what it was, Sankofa. Sankofa Farms is a 12-acre farm located in Cedar Grove, North Carolina, with the mission to get those who are affected by food deserts healthy and nutritious products. But in order to make this model sustainable, we thought about how we can incorporate these youth. So we created Sankofa Farms Agricultural Academy as well. And in this academy, not only are these students certified beekeepers, not only do they conduct tours, not only are they paid speakers, they can also tell you about every aspect of how to help their community. I can recall a story from one of our students, Kamani. And if you ever have the chance to meet Kamani, you will see that he's very large in stature, but Kamani is Kamani. Depending on what side of bed he gets up on, dictates what mood he's gonna be in. And I can recall a moment when we were coming back from the farm after a long day of hard work, and he looked at me. And he said, you know what, Mr. Bell? I'm happy I didn't quit the farm. So I kind of paused for a second, because I didn't know what else he was gonna say. And I asked him why. He said, this is the first thing in my life that I have not quit. To have a 16-year-old who has the odds stacked against him, he has the will to want to break generational cycles. When you look, when you, if you would have asked me when I was 16 what I wanted to do, I would have bet the bank that I was going to be in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> and we can see that didn't work out. There's another story I recall of one of our students, Cameron. And Cameron can be described as Cameron is Cameron. I can recall an event that we had called the Atlantic Festival. We were brought there by the, by the underwriter and we were asked to talk about our experience with our honeybees in Washington, DC. And the weeks leading up to that event, our preparation was terrible. But Cameron has this very interesting phrase. If you ask him if he's ready for something, even after he does a terrible job, he says, don't worry about it, Mr. Bell, I'm a professional. <laughs> That's his phrase. And when he got on stage, that he was. Not only did he speak with poise and elegance, he also said something very profound. He was asked, why do you enjoy working with the bees so much? And his answer, is because I enjoy watching them create something out of nothing. This is our Sankofa. So from now on, when you hear the term Sankofa, do not just think of the mere definition. Sankofa is a declaration, a declaration into justice, freedom, and equality for all people. 
Sankofa is a journey, a journey into which every single one of you in this audience is invited to be a part of. And in that, Sankofa is a new reality. So welcome to the new reality, the reality of Sankofa. Thank you.